Actions are a great way to automate repetitive tasks in Photoshop, but when the action you want to apply to a series of images involves specific locations within each image, it can represent a challenge. For example, in this video I'll show you how to add copyright text to the bottom right corner of a series of images. When those images have different aspect ratios or different pixel dimensions, it introduces a challenge for the action and we need to account for the fact that those images have different dimensions. To get started recording an action, I'll need to use the Actions panel, so I'll choose Window Actions from the menu in Photoshop. That'll bring up the Actions panel. Now I can add a new set by clicking the Folder button, the Create a New Set button, at the bottom of the Actions panel, or I can choose an existing set that I'd like to have my action contained in. Then I'll click the Create New Action button, the blank sheet of paper, at the bottom of the Actions panel. That will bring up the New Action dialog box. I can type a new name for my action. For example, in this case, I'll call it Copyright Notice, since I'm going to use this action to apply a copyright notice to the bottom right corner of each image. I can change the layer set if I need to for any reason. I can also assign a shortcut key using one of the function keys and possibly the shift and control or command keys. And I can add a color for the action, which will only be visible if I have the actions panel set to the button mode. When I have everything configured the way I want it, I'll click the record button. I'm now in record mode for my action, but I don't need to operate at a fast pace here. Photoshop isn't recording the action in real time. It's simply remembering the tasks I performed so that it can perform them again in an automated fashion later. The first step is to open an image that we'll use as the basis of building our action, so I'll choose File Open and just open an existing image. I want to add copyright text to this image, so I'll choose the Type tool and then click inside the image and type the text that I'd like to have added at the bottom right corner of the image. In this case, I'll just write a simple copyright message. I'll choose the Move tool to stop editing the text and to enable me to move that text around in just a moment. But first, in order to make the text more visible on a variety of different background colors and textures, I'm going to click the FX button at the bottom of the Layers panel and choose Stroke. This will bring up the Layer Style dialog box where I can change the parameters for my stroke. In this case, just using a one pixel stroke that falls outside of the text area set to a color of black. I'll click OK to apply that stroke and as you can see when I move the text around it remains visible regardless of the color of the background. Of course in this case I want my text aligned to the bottom right corner of the image. In order to accomplish this in such a way that it will always go to the bottom right corner regardless of the particular aspect ratio of the image, I'm going to start off by selecting both my text layer and the background image layer on the layers panel. So with my text layer active, I'll hold the shift key and click on the background layer so that both are active. This will enable my alignment buttons on the options bar for the move tool. So I'll click the rightmost of the vertical alignment buttons to align the text to the bottom of the image, and then the rightmost of the set of horizontal alignment buttons to align the text to the right side of the image. This will put the text into the bottom right corner of the image. I don't want it right up against the edge of the image though, so I'll click on just the text layer, and then with the Move Tool active still, I'll hold the Shift key and press left arrow once and up arrow once to nudge the text away from the edge of the image. To de-emphasize the text just a little bit, I'll also reduce the opacity up at the top right corner of the Options bar to about 50%. At this point I've finished creating my copyright text, but I want to include a step in the action that saves the file so that Photoshop will know how I want the file saved when I apply the action in batch to a group of images. So I'll choose File Save As from the menu and change the file format to JPEG, which is what I want to save the file in this case, assuming that I'm going to use it on the web, for example. I'll give it a new name so I don't replace my existing file, and then I'll click Save. Because I chose the JPEG file format, the JPEG options dialog box will come up, so I'll set the quality as desired and click OK. Now that I've saved the final image with the copyright text added to it, I can click the stop button to stop recording my action. At this point I can close my test image and I'm ready to apply this action in batch to a group of images. I'll close the actions panel just to get it out of my way for the time being and then choose file automate batch to bring up the batch dialog box which allows me to apply an action in batch to a group of images. 
The action that is currently active on the Actions panel will automatically be chosen, but I can choose a different set and action if need be. I'll set my source to Folder because I have a folder that contains a group of images I want to apply this action to. I can click Choose if needed to select the specific folder containing the images I want to process, but in this case I've already set it to the appropriate location. I'll want to be sure to turn on the Override Action Open Commands checkbox so that the batch settings here are used as the basis of opening images, not the actual open step in the action. I don't need to turn on the Include All Subfolders checkbox because I only want to process the images contained in the actual folder I've selected, not any images in subfolders below that. I'll also be sure to turn on both of the suppressed checkboxes. The first one disables any dialog boxes that appear when I open an image, which in most cases refers to the Adobe Camera Raw dialog box, and I also want to suppress color profile warnings. I'll set the destination option to Folder, and then click Choose if needed to change the output folder. In this case, I've already set my folder to the desired location. I'll also turn on the Override Action Save As Commands checkbox. This one is very important. While I included a Save As step in my action, that was really only to tell Photoshop how I want the file saved. If I don't turn this option on in the Batch dialog box, then the action will save each image in the exact same location with the exact same file name, which means ultimately I'm only going to end up with a single resulting file. I can also change the file naming options, but in this case I'll just retain the existing document name and add the appropriate extension. Now that I've set all my options, I can simply click OK and all of my images will be processed in batch. When the batch processing is complete, I can open all of the images that were processed, and as you can see as I cycle through them, in each case the copyright text appears in the bottom right corner of the image, regardless of the pixel dimensions or aspect ratio for each of those images.